Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Stock Swish Show, another play of the day here, which was T2. Great call I made in this gap. I actually had a video on YouTube last night that this was a good gap, and I liked it, and it was going to work. I saw it in the post market, and it did. It took a little while to get going here, and actually went to the dream target, which was $19. And it's one of these ones where somebody had mentioned in the room that Kramer was on some TV channel and was talking about T2 that it was a long to buy it. And I said, no, no, this is a great short. It's a great short. However, that's probably what made the stock go wiggly jiggly here in the morning and rally like it did here over the high. This was kind of jerky here in the morning. All this time frame was talking on TV. But the fact was it was not a long, it was a short. And if you buy stocks based on people's recommendations, whether it's Kramer's or other people's, then you really got to have a lot of trust and conviction in that person. And if you don't know their methodology to trade, their strategy, the reason they're taking the trade or calling the trade, or if you don't know them personally, it's actually a lot of risk to do something that someone that you don't know personally or don't understand why they're doing it is telling you why to do it. Me personally, I trade gaps. That's a strategy is gaps. And when I'm seeing that I like something, I'm using a system I created, a system which I teach to people in a class. And if you sign up and take the class, you'll learn the system for yourself. So you'll have your own reasons for understanding why T2 is a short, why it's a good short, why it was a good gap, and why I rated for the 26-point rating system. And it didn't matter what Kramer said on TV. Was it going to stop me from calling this and liking this and, and seeing this as a short? Because that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it was. It's exactly it. And it's red on the day. Stock had a dollar and a half extension on the day. That's a short. Okay. Uh, let's look at the bigger picture here. It's kind of a weird one. Weird because this is this is real here. No. Yeah. All right, let's just look at this here. So the beginning part of the day, it bounced around a lot. Clean entries here then. If you took it aggressively here, you just take the stop. I talk about this sometimes, things set up, go lower, which is what this did. This did break fast, had a move in here into the morning, but then flip. And so you, you can take this trade here and then take it again, okay? That's why you have money management. Now, if you waited patiently and did it on the five-minute chart or the two-minute chart, no, the two-minute chart, I think, actually, let me look at the two-minute. No, it was the five minute really that you would have had to wait for right here. This entry would have been 96 by 15. 96 by 15. But this is the uh, early one, okay? Here into the beginning part of the period. Stop over the high. And as soon as this does something like this, I'm reading the price. I'm reading what the price is doing. I'm reading the price here, and I like this weakness. This is good. Now it didn't hold this. Does it mean that the gap is it off, you're off of it, that you're not going to do it, that you're going to give up on it? If you took it and took a stop, do you immediately say, uh, no, uh, this actually was a good gap, okay? Rallied a little bit more than expected, but the maximum level, uh, you know, happened, I think, because of the fact that Kramer was talking. And as soon as somebody said that, I was like, uh, yep, that's the story. So anyways, you can retake it again if you still have conviction and if it still sets up. All the price was telling here that this was still going was going to break. It was really wiggly and jiggly, really wiggly and jiggly. And again, so you have to have the stop at the right place. Finally broke down in here. This is all happening on its own, all happening on its own accord. And, you know, after it broke 1950, which was really the number, it just was no looking back, no looking back for it. This was wild, though, today. And it's just one of these ones. Spread is good in here now. It had a little bit of a teeny spread in the morning. Beautiful move. And again, Kramer called this as a long, according to the people that were watching it on TV in my room. But I, I don't watch TV when I trade. I don't listen to what other people are doing. But I thought it was very interesting that someone mentioned that this was a long and then they were concerned about it. And I said, no, 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 no. This is a short. And it played out exactly the way that I rated the gap. I'm telling you, understanding gaps and how they work and reading price is the only correct way to trade. And if you make calls and don't understand what's happening here in this gap today, you'll do something like buy this if you don't get it. Because you'll think to yourself that you're going to buy this into support. And you think that and then you watch Kramer and then you decide to do it. But if you bought this stock today, you lost money. 
unless they're holding it for the next 20 years. And I got to be honest with you, it's not even a good long-term buy now because of this thing here today. So uh, this chart's kind of a mess now. It's kind of a mess actually for a little while here. And I wouldn't be surprised if this continues now. So it was a very nice move though today. It looks tired. I think this is pretty much done for the day. It could make one more attempt. <clears throat> it can make one more attempt to go back down to the low here today, but I think this is done. I think it went to the number. It went past the number. It broke 19. It had a beautiful move, and it was a short. And if you learn nothing else from me at all, learn to think for yourself, read the information, and have conviction in what you do and what you know. The reason I think it's important for people to take the class to trade with me is because they have to learn and understand the information on gaps and how to read them to get conviction. Because if you didn't have conviction in doing this today, you might have heard something that Kramer said and you might have bought it or not shorted it. Either way. Okay? So conviction helps you do the right thing. It helps you not listen to other people that don't know what I know and what I'm teaching people. You must read the price of the stock and the gap. Make the determination, rate the gap, go through the system, go through the checklist, and if it rates for the system, you can watch it to short. This was good. It was always a short. So there it is. Beautiful, beautiful T2. I had it on YouTube last night. For anyone that wanted to see it, I made the call way ahead of time before I even rated it, okay? And when you get good at trading and reading price, you will get a good eye. Your eye can see it. I can see it when it's doing it. I can see it when it's gapping. I can see it when it's trading. I can see it when it's live. I can see it when it's breaking. I can see the momentum. I can see the price. I can see the selling. I can see the shorting. Selling, 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 selling. This is panic selling. Boom, 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 boom. These are 15-minute bars. Look at that thing. No let up in the 15-minute chart all the way down until basically 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That is weakness. It is not something that you buy. Okie doke. So have a wonderful day, everybody. This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. Email me if you're interested in signing up for the Gap class this weekend, May 17th and 18th. There's still a few spots available. And email me if you have any questions or would like more information. Melissa at the StockSwish.com. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.